Hi there, my name is Roy Dunn and I'm going to walk through uh, a couple of features of the laser beam triggering system as used with the stop shot. If we have a red laser beam across a trail and we want to photograph any mammals that might be walking across that trail, as we set it up, it's a very simple setup and let's see what happens in the default mode. What I'm going to do is we have a laser transmitter here, a laser receiver here, and of course we can't see the beam until I bring this plastic bag in front of us. And now you can see the red dot, which is the laser being live in the system. But if you remember from previous videos, as I break that beam, nothing is happening because trigger one is actually not enabled. None of these output triggers are enabled. If I enable that trigger, now when I break the beam, keep your eye on this LED. If, if this trigger one happened to be connected to a camera or a flash, it would be activated. And we'll see that when I break the beam, this red LED will fire as I break the beam. Very simple. Please also notice that the beam itself is not switched off. It's only blocked by my finger. And if we think about it, if I have a, a cat or a mountain lion, whatever, breaking this beam in the wild, the red laser point might be on the shoulder of the cat as I make the exposure. In other words, the laser beam is going to be part of my image. And frankly, we don't really want any of our wildlife images with red laser spots on them. Fortunately, the stop shot system is, is equipped with a really neat feature that will extinguish the, the laser as soon as the beam is broken so that it won't appear in your image. What I'm going to do now is describe the menu sequence to enable the laser extinguish feature as soon as the beam is broken so that it doesn't appear in our image. What I do, it's a global configuration. The, the um, sensor power off, in other words, it basically takes the power away from the sensor the instant that the beam is broken. And that's a global configuration feature. So if you recall, if we hold the config button down for a couple of seconds, we actually get into the global configuration menu. I will then scroll through the list of items here until I get to the power off line. And as you can see, power off at the moment is none. I can cycle through this because it's trigger dependent. It's output, I can say only turn the power off with trigger one, trigger two, trigger three, all of the triggers or none of them. In this case, we're using trigger one, so that's what I'm going to select. If we go to the next line, you'll see the power off time is one second. I've set it to one second for this demonstration so it's actually visible. The time off period by default is only a quarter of a second, but it's a little tough to see in this demonstration situation. So that's where we're going to leave it. Hitting the config button, we come back to the main screen. And remember, I have to enable trigger one in order for it to actually operate. Because if you see, if I break the beam now, nothing's happening on the trigger output. Now we're there, it's enabled with essentially instantaneous response time. But watch what happens. Not only do we get the trigger output enabled here, but watch what happens to the beam when I break it. You see, it actually is off for an entire second. As soon as I break the beam, we get a trigger output, but the beam remains off for a second. So it's not actually going to appear in our exposure. This is a really, really neat feature. And for us wildlife photographers, frankly essential. Using lasers across trails is really great at night because it enables very long range, very precise alignment, but we really don't want our laser points, laser spots in our images, do we? Thanks for watching.